Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 126 of the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers here, as always, with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm good. So if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, happy Halloween. But what we figured is that you guys are probably (laughs) probably aren't so crazy. We are not doing a Halloween episode today because we figured very few of you will get a chance to listen until tomorrow. So happy November in that case. Happy November. And wow, that means we're like really legitimately heading into like the winter and holiday season. This is getting crazy. Yeah. November gets real. October's fun, kind of transitional. Um, So we have a fun topic today. We're going to talk about cousins, the cousins our kids have, the cousins we grew up with, and kind of what that relationship means. And Megan, I'm going to lean heavily on you because you are, you have a bountiful cousin situation going on on your side. I have a bounty of cousins, an abundance (laughs) of cousins. I have cousins that I grew up with. I have cousins so much older than me that I never even met them. I I have cousins I've never met. And then I've also got um, my kids. There are 16 children in the cousin realm. Yeah. You know, including my five. So in my family, so, and all relatively the same age and and plus John's sister has three. Yeah. So more cousins over there. So yes. Uh, well not all, not all the same age, but enough close enough to the same ages that like they all know each other. Right. There aren't huge gaps in age. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's crazy. And then my side is much different, which we'll get into. Um, but my kids have a brand new cousin. My sister yeah, had her I'm baby. So, so we'll talk more about all of that um, today. And oh, also, yeah. you're, we're going to do a little uh, segment at the very end featuring, I believe, one or two of your kids. Is that correct? That is correct. And I'm hoping we may be able to even maybe get a cousin. That would be awesome. That. I'm, 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 I'm holding out hope because I think that would be really cool. But we if got, not, they can talk about their cousins. Yeah, we got great feedback um, when I had Allegra on a few weeks back. And I know you guys love hearing from our kids and we like putting our kids on the show. So listen all the way to the end and you will hear um, an assortment of Megan Francis's (laughs) offspring, children, cousin, niece, nephew, whatever it is. Yeah. A surprise pack. Yeah. So before we can actually get into all this cousin talk, I guess I do have to turn the mic over to you to talk about our sponsor for the day, right? Yeah, so this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Learning. LinkedIn Learning is an online learning platform that allows you to develop personal and professional skills from home on your own time. Yeah, I love this because it, it's great if you want to make a move in your career or if you just want to learn a new skill. Like, say you want to redesign your website or improve your communication skills or master Photoshop. Uh, courses for all of those things and more are offered on LinkedIn Learning, which is also now featuring um, courses from lynda.com, which is a really well respected online learning platform as well. I just found that out. That's great. So I had been putting off learning to use QuickBooks for our business for uh, several months now. So just I hopped few. just a few. So I hopped on LinkedIn Learning to finally make that happen. I loved that I could use the transcript to search for the topics I was really struggling with. So if you're more of a reader than a watcher or a listener, you can really absorb this information. However, works for you. It was also really easy to get the LinkedIn Learning app on my phone, and that allowed me to pick up listening and watching on mobile, right where I had left off on my computer. Yeah, that's great. And our international and Canadian listeners are going to love this. It is available worldwide, so we're not leaving you guys out this time. (laughs) I also love that you pay just one monthly price and there are never any hidden charges or upsells. Nope. You get access to everything when you are a member. So we have a special deal for you. You can get a free 30 day trial with LinkedIn learning by visiting linkedin.com slash mom. So it's just linkedin.com slash mom, all lowercase. And we just are really thankful to them for sponsoring this podcast. So when you guys help support our sponsors you're supporting our show and we're grateful to you as well all right so should we talk about cousins let's talk about cousins let's talk about the tiniest cousin first can i go first oh absolutely (laughs) please do because i want to hear all about this little cousin i know so um my younger sister had her first baby um about i guess a week and a half ago now so a little baby girl and that is the first first cousin on my side for my kids and then on my husband's side we just have one as well so brian's sister had a baby three years ago exactly she just turned three um and they live all the way in connecticut so we you know we talked about at the top of the show 
show that you are cousin rich, your kids are cousin rich, and yes. we are like barely kind of just starting. And so, You're cousin um, minimalists. Yes, we are. We're, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we're very Small excited. Small but mighty. <laughs> My kids are really excited for this new little cousin, and we've had a great time sort of cultivating the cousin thing with Brian's niece, our niece on that side as well. Although I will say it's far. We have, you know, they've only hung out maybe three times total in her three years of life. So yeah. it's a little, it's a little different. Do you want to? Yeah. Um, I would love to hear how you grew up with cousins. Like how much were cousins oh. a part of your growing okay. up? Okay. All right. So my dad was one. My mother was the oldest of five. My dad was the second youngest of five. Okay. Yeah. And I was the youngest of the second youngest. Right. Siblings, children. Right. So by the time I came along, there were cousins on my dad's side that were legitimately adults, like right. in their 20s. Right. Um, I think I was born when my dad was 36. Mm -hmm. His oldest sibling would have been like 46. Right. So there were, you know, there was a wide right. array. And I honestly couldn't tell you how many I have, how many cousins I have <laughs> on that side. I will say that um, every sibling except for one had children and most of them had large families. Several of them also had blended families. Okay. Um, so then there were other sort of like cousins thrown in later that I was never really clear who, who they belonged to or, you know, like right. there was just a lot going on. So all told on my dad's side, I'm going to guess there were probably, gosh, probably 12 first cousins Wow, on my dad's side. And that doesn't include our family of four. That just includes right. like his siblings. Right. And that might be a conservative figure, but I'm just going to go with it. And then on my mom's side, her sister Kay had five children. Her brother Bill had four. Wow. Um, and I think that's it. My mom had a big family, but only two of her siblings actually had kids. Okay. And then her. And, ha and so how many of these did you grow up seeing often or like, so I grew up seeing my mom's, all of the cousins on my mom's side. I saw a lot. They all lived in Michigan. Okay. And several were up in the UP where I was. So I saw them, you know, pretty regularly. Like it would kind of go in and out, you know, the winters were rough up there. So during yeah. the winters, we wouldn't see the downstate cousins as much. We would still see the up North cousins because you know, when you're used to it, just the weather being terrible all the time, that does not stop you right. from seeing people. Um, so I saw, you know, the, the uh, four cousins up north, maybe every two months. And right. then the ones downstate, maybe every three or four months, definitely okay. several times a year. And that really continued through most of my childhood. Then there was my dad's uh, one sister who lived near enough that we could see the cousins and she was the next youngest to him. You know, okay. I, we saw mm -hmm. her cousin. We saw her, her kids a lot too. So that would be like my cousin Molly and their family. I only really remember the youngest of that group though. Like, it's so funny. Like there are all these kids and I'll see them at family reunions and my family, my dad's side of the family, they have this weird, like, I don't, they all look the same. And oh, so, you know, now not having seen cousins, sometimes since I was a child, when I do run into them every, just randomly, and we happen to be like at my aunt's house at the same time, I'll be like, you're such a Francis. I mean, <laughs> I just, you could be any one of my brothers. You could be my dad. Yeah. You could be any one of my uncles. We just all have this look and yeah, they, the men really have this look. And so, um, I lose track, honestly, of which ones of those I grew up seeing a lot. Those ones yeah. were probably more like once a year. Right. But I had a, a core group of like 10 cousins that I played with on a regular basis growing up regularly. And they were a regular part of my life. So I really grew up with cousins being a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's fun. And then, you know, we've kind of created that here uh, as adults now. My sister is 10 years older than me, but her oldest Mario is not that much older. He's, um, let's see, he is 26 now, I want to say. Okay. So you so became an aunt when you were I became an aunt young. when I was young. Okay, so I was 13 when he was born, but that still tracks because he'll yeah. probably turn, I think he'll turn 27 this okay. um, winter. And so, the, <laughs> yeah, and so Jacob is not that much younger than him. Jacob right. will be 20 very right. soon. So they're not that big of an age difference. And then after that... Um, Cecily or Aaron is a little bit like three years older than Jacob, four years older than Jacob. And then Cecily and Jacob are exactly one year apart. Okay. Then I had my kids and then William or my two oldest and then William. And then a few years after William was born, Jack on my brother, that was John mm -hmm. and Jenna's first where Jack was born like about a year and a half after 
Will. And then Owen was born the same year as Jack. And the year that Owen was born, every sibling in the household had, or every sibling in my family had a kid. Oh, that's so, so funny. Yeah. Uh, Jack was born in, I want to say, March. Then April was Quinn. Then July was Allie, uh, my brother Buck's daughter. And then Owen was born in December. So he's oh, a little what? younger, but yeah. like he was born, they were all in the same year. So there was a year we were all pregnant. And then That's there was, amazing. there were years that we were all breastfeeding, like all at the same time. So every family gathering, there was just so much breastfeeding going on. I feel like hilarious. that would be really bonding as a mom to have your sisters and sisters-in-law be having kids at the same time. Like this is yeah. what I really like. This is the part where I do have a little bit of cousin envy of people. And this was the same for my growing up too. So, um, my mom is second of four girls, but she was the first to have kids by a long shot. So she got married young and had me young. And so even though she's not the oldest, she she went first. And I was my my first cousin on that side wasn't born until I was eight and a half. She was born the same time as my sister, actually. So my sister and our cousin Elise are really close because they are exactly the same age. But I was eight and a half. Like there was no one on that side cousin wise. And we also lived far. We moved from Oregon to California when I was five. And so we didn't see even when the cousins started to be born. um, We only saw them once a year, probably. Um, They were much younger than me. And after after that. Elise was born when I was like eight and a half. Then it continued. But my other my aunts on that side continued having their babies until I was in college. So like you saying you had cousins who were adults. I was the adult. I think my last first cousin on that side was born when I was like a sophomore in college. So I was like 19. Yeah. Um, and so those those are I don't know. They're people I feel really like cousiny about but i we don't have the shared playing together growing up my sister yeah. does a little bit with our with that one cousin that's her age but still not as often because we live far away and then on my dad's side my dad has a twin sister and an older brother they both had kids but earlier so on that side they all the cousins are older and we just don't see them very often i actually just saw my first cousin on my dad's side at my sister's baby shower in colorado but i have probably seen her we probably saw each other a couple times when we were little like when i don't remember Mm. and then one thanksgiving when i was i think brian and i were probably engaged so like you know 15 years ago and then like this like a month ago so it's like it's like a once every 15 years and i don't know i feel really um there's something like still super connecting about the fact that you share grandparents, like your parents are siblings. I think especially as our parents get older, you know, your parents have passed on. Like Mm -hmm. there's like those family connections. Definitely. You share something with those first cousins for sure, because the lineage is there. Mm -hmm. But I have always felt a little not I don't know, sad is maybe not the right word, but just like, I definitely feel like I missed out on the cousin experience that a lot of people have when they grow up regularly seeing with and playing with cousins who are the same age. And mine is sort of twofold. It's the, the, geographical distance that we didn't see people and then also the age difference on both sides so yeah yeah and I think I think that you know the my cousins that after I moved away so my mom and I moved um, downstate and lived in the same town as uh, many of my cousins one whole family of cousins five of them um, for a while and then I ended up moving to the other side of the state with my dad and after that I really didn't see them very much for years and now they all have their own kids and like Honestly, they're all having like tons of kids, just like our family's having tons of kids. I lose track now of how many yeah. kids. I think Carolyn listens to us. Hey, Carolyn. Um, she is my second oldest cousin on that side. Okay. And honestly, there are so many kids in that family now. I've lost track. Just like I'm sure when we were all having yeah. kids at a rapid pace, they lost yeah. track of how many that we have. And so we don't hang out very often anymore. And we don't see each other very often. But I do think when we do get back together, there's just because we're all related and there's that shared history, you... But I kind of feel like we'd have that anyway. I mean, even if, you know, we hadn't played together as much as we did when we were kids, we would still have that just recognition that we're from the same family and we share the same lineage and all that. So even when I see my older cousins on my dad's side that I don't remember at all from my childhood, there's still that connection. Like we still all seem very alike, even though we're all so different. Isn't that no background together? I think that's fascinating. And um, back to the grandparent thing for a second was, was some of the time, like, did you have grandparents? Because the grandparent is obviously like the unifying, that's what you share with a first cousin. Do you have memories of being like, in a grandparent's house or like under a grandparent's care with cousins. Cause I think that's sort of like, that's where the memories start to overlap. I know on Brian's side, he, Brian's pretty close. He doesn't have a lot of cousins, but he is same age and pretty close with 
cousins on both sides. And it's really fun to hear them talk about their memories of their grandparents because that's where the overlap really gets deep, you know? Yeah, no, it very much is. Um, I would say, so the only grandparent I that I share on that side. Well, obviously there's only two on each side, right? So is our grandma who is still alive. She is now 93 and um, really sharp and very active and has a lot of opinions. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And in a lot of ways, like grandma being around and she lives with my aunt Kay, who is the um, mother of the five, the biggest family on that side. Um, And so, yeah, grandma has been, a constant figure for them for very many years and and was for us before that a lot because my grandma would visit us a lot when I was much, much younger. I don't really remember that as well. But like her stories and our stories about her definitely are very, you know, very much part of that experience of of all of us knowing each other and all of us spending time together. So I definitely think there's some of that. And our parents too, you know, our parents all have stories and our parents grew up together and that's um, their relationships also kind of end up it, by defining your relationship with your cousins like where your parents choose to live defines yeah. how close you are with your cousins in some way or if, if they like each other or yeah don't, i was gonna or, say how well yeah, they get along yeah, how long they how well they get along i mean yeah that all ends up defining your cousin relationships yeah. so yeah i think um definitely there's part of that on my dad's side um i also by the time i was born my grandfather was no longer alive on that side so my dad my grandma on that side was nana and she was always where on my mom's side, my grandmother is very like down to earth and really part of it. She's just like kind of the scrappy woman who you think could like kick the crap out of anything. <laughs> and then Nana was sort of much more matriarchal and sort of everyone kind of doted on her. It was a very different, very, very, she was kind of regal. Okay. She was just kind of sit at the, the end of the table. She was the matriarch and everyone would just bring her her scotch and you know she you had to go bestow it like you had to go to her so she could bestow a kiss upon you you did not right. bestow a kiss upon her it was very different and now she was much much older so she's been she lived into her 90s but has been gone for 20 yeah. years now so um very different relationships with her and because of that i do feel like there's a difference in the way the siblings relate to each other yeah and then there's a difference in the co- the way the cousins relate to each yeah. other there just is and it's I can't put my finger on what it is. It's just they're like the way the grandmother is determines the way the family will be. I think that's just really kind of cool. I think that's very true. So my dad's mom died quite young. She was 56. Uh, and my dad was in dental school. So he was in his twenties. Um, And so my mom never had a mother-in-law, like never knew her mother-in-law, which means I never had a maternal grand, I mean, uh, excuse me, a paternal grandmother. So my dad's mom, you know, had died years before I was even born. And I do think that that, and there's no like, there's no negativity or bad blood or anything on that side of the family, but there was a missing matriarch and Mm -hmm. that I do think my grandpa on that side was alive until I was about eight. Um, but, but to connect the siblings who then connect the cousins, um, I do think that makes a difference. Um, so I think that's, that's fascinating. fascinating. Um, yeah, well, I want to get into the cousins that our kids have and kind of how we nurture those relationships but should we take a quick sponsor break first yeah let's do it all right so we're going to talk about prep dish you guys have heard us talking about this and i have loved seeing you guys's prep dish have you noticed this megan on instagram and social media our listeners are showing us their prep dish meals tagging us tagging prep dish it's really fun to see i feel like we're all making dinner together across the country oh my gosh i love the way that is such a fun way to think of it like what if we actually like all, I mean, we all live at different places, so that wouldn't work because we'd all be making dinner <laughs> at different times between, you know, like 1 p.m. your yeah. time and, you know, but it still would be so fun if there was like a little dinner. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, like, like a, a way to party. check in. Well, yeah, um, prep dish, the idea is you prep everything on the weekend. So it really does right. bring everybody together on like a Saturday or a Sunday. That's very, very true. Um, and so we just did uh, one of their menus recently um, and Brian and I prepped together and gosh, I mean, I can't say enough about how nice it is to know what's, know what's for dinner on the weeknights um, and it comes together in five or ten minutes because you've done all the hard work on the weekend. Um, these are also healthy meals so we made um, lemon garlic baked salmon with whole roasted mm. carrots and asparagus. Um, 
And again, it just came together super fast. We didn't have to think about it on the weeknight. It was delicious. Um, and a side benefit is I was having really healthy leftovers for lunch throughout the week um, oh. because there was enough left over. And so my lunches were healthier and I didn't feel like I was dipping into dinner that night or taking away from because dinner was already planned. So the idea is Prep Dish will send you um, a meal plan and a grocery list all organized so that you know exactly what you have to get and exactly what you have to prep for the week ahead. You spend a a couple of hours doing that on the weekend and then your meals come together super fast super healthy um, real foods these are whole foods and real foods um, not convenience recipes um, and they do have gluten-free dairy-free and paleo options um, and a ton of ways to kind of customize and substitute and make it work for you so you're still cooking for your family it's just like someone's taken the thinking out of it for you I love that yeah I, I kind of just I'm loving this idea of having like a weekend dinner making club too it is it's, it's <laughs> yeah. like yeah and so thank you to those who have tried prep dish if you haven't if you've been on the fence um, come to the momhour.com and I'll even uh, post a couple of our listeners pictures it's fun to see these refrigerators filled with healthy prepped foods for the week um, and just see what everybody's doing. So to claim your two week free trial offer, you go to prepdish.com slash the mom hour. So it's prepdish.com slash the mom hour. That gets you two weeks free. So there's no reason not to try it out. Yeah, there's no you, reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then check out our website as well and our social media because um, I've been resharing a couple of you guys' prep dish pictures and that's so much fun to see. So thanks to prep dish. Really, really fun. Yeah. All right. Should we get back to cousin talk? Cousin talk. You okay. Question. I think you had a question for me, didn't you? Well, yeah. You I'm just. That way. Okay. So your kids have a lot of cousins who well, and do. Sev- and three at least who live right in the same town and go to the same school. So yes, that's kind Which of is like different. This is the whole <laughs> thing that I am kind of that's foreign to me because, like I said at the beginning, my kids right now have one cousin on each side. They both live out of state and they're both separated by several years age wise. Um, so I'm curious how you've seen these cousin relationships develop over time. And if you feel like you guys had to do much to sort of encourage that bond or if it's natural. And then what happens when it's, you know, it's like siblings, they're going to fight, yeah. right? Or want to exclude each other. Or how has all that played out? So I will just, let me just give you the setup here yeah. in this school. Um, so just in this one cousin group. Um, I'm not even going to talk about my t- my two older teenagers because they're kind of they're on the older end, right? But it goes: Will's in eighth grade, Jack, uh, my brother's son, is in seventh, Owen is in sixth. <laughs> we have a friend, a family friend, in fifth, <laughs> um, whose kids in fifth. Then uh, Ruby is in fourth, Claire is in third. <laughs> um, I have another family friend in second, and then Luna is in first. So. Basically, the two grades that we don't have a cousin in between first and eighth, we have like these close, close family yeah. friends who might as well be cousins. Right. But like there's a cousin occupying almost every grade. So, so it's the teachers hilarious. love you guys. They're like, oh, here they come. <laughs> I hope they love us. <laughs> um, I think because we've lived here for so long, we moved to St. Joe when William was not even in kindergarten yet. Owen was thir- three. Claire wasn't born yet. So the kids have really grown up together. Yeah. But they also get breaks because they're cousins. They don't have to share a bedroom. They don't live together. So there really haven't been, there hasn't been a lot of actual conflict. What I will say has been tricky is that their their ages, none of their ages line up perfectly. So there has always been this push-pull. Like William for a while was seeming old. He was pulling away from Jack and Owen, who were best buds. And then Jack got into middle school. Yeah. And Owen was still in elementary school. So Jack kind of started to kind of catch up with Will and then Will and Jack did theater together. So then they became closer again. And now Owen, I think is kind of struggling to catch up. And Luna has always been struggling to catch up. Poor girl. Like (laughs) she has been the baby of the baby, like just the babiest baby because she's the literally the youngest cousin, the youngest sibling. She's like the youngest of this whole St. Joe lineup. (laughs) She just, and, and unfortunately, because, because Clara is, the next youngest okay. like Claire, she, Luna's the only one Clara can kind of crap on yes so she's yeah so she does pretty hard sometimes yeah. and I have to really step in and we've talked about that before when we've talked about you know when to step in and when not to and right. when it becomes kind of abusive because Clara's like well everyone crapping on me who can I crap on that's <laughs> Luna gets it luckily Luna's very like good natured most of the time she's just so eager that she becomes like that like puppy right. that was like slobbering all over you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Everyone's like, okay, enough. So I wouldn't say there's been a lot of outright conflict. I think where it becomes more management of like, how much do I try to make sure my kids are still hanging out with their cousins who maybe they're 
at a, they're just not jiving with right now and how much do I just let it ride and I think that's going to be honestly when the girls are teenagers I think is when it's going to be the biggest deal yeah. I don't think with the boy I think that the boys will just figure it out like they have no problem hanging out with younger and older yeah. siblings and, or I mean kids and there's never really been a big issue but I think when the girls you know you've got Ruby who's very alpha mm-hmm. and tough and older and then you've got Clara, who's a people pleaser and right. in the middle and anxious mm-hmm. and wants to make everyone happy, but also really wants to do her own thing. And then you've got Luna, who basically is like a, a party girl actress, you know, life of the party, wants everyone to love her clown. Right. And so when you've got those three together and they're like 16, 14 and 12 or however their ages are going to line up, like they're they're not quite two years apart. They're, right. That's kind of how the ages will go. I mean, right. that's when I think things are going to get maybe a little awkward. And so, you guys, do, you and Jenna will probably just let it play out, right? Like you're not going to, you're yeah, not going to force them to be friends. No, ca- I don't think we'll force them. Yeah. They'll still have to spend time together because right. we spend time together. And, but I, I just think the way it's worked with the boys, is like when William was feeling a little older, I, he didn't have to come as often. Like when yeah. we would do stuff, when I'd go take the little ones over there for dinner, he just didn't have to come every time. Yeah. And, and, if there was a birthday, like if there was a, I'm um, not a birthday party. They're always invited to birthday parties. But yeah. if there was like a, um, a sleepover and you know, Owen was having a sleepover with Jack, William didn't always have to stay or, right. you know, so it's like those things. But if he's having a party, like the expectation is he's going to invite Jack because right. that's, that's an invitation you, you know, you extend to your right. cousin. Yeah. Um, and, and I will say with the boys, it's never that they don't want to hang out. I think sometimes it's just that they, lo- they want to do other things more or like, you know, William might want to go to his buddy's house and that's not going to include Owen and Jack this time. Right. Right. But that well, doesn't mean yeah. he doesn't want to see, hang out with Jack. It's just right. that he's got other stuff to do. Yep. And I think there's some of this that is probably similar to sibling relationships oh, where absolutely. like there's an expectation that we're, that we love each other and that we're around for each other. But as kids get older, there's just a natural sort of pulling away and the cousin may not always be the coolest friend they have. Right. The only reason it could be more tricky with cousins is because now you've got another set of parents. Yeah. So where you and your spouse might, or just you might be completely in line with what you think about making, you know, how your siblings, how the, your kids handle their siblings. Right. If you and your brother or sister aren't in alignment on that, then you might have more trouble. And I don't think that's going to be the case with us. I think we'll be able to figure it out. And even if there's some misunderstandings or whatever, I think it's not going to be a big deal in the end, but like that is something that makes it a little more complicated. You just have more adults involved and anytime more adults are involved in kid relationships, it becomes complicated. No, I agree. Because everybody has an opinion. I mean, I don't, I don't have any of the experience you're talking about, but as you're talking, I'm thinking about the differences when you only see cousins once or twice a year. And I think as the adults, we get super excited. Like, Oh my gosh, here's your cousin. And the kids are like, I've never like met this kid. I have no relationship. Like I have no relationship. So I think it's probably a good lesson for the, all of the adults to remember like kids. I mean, what's interesting is we started this whole show talking about the way we feel about our cousins now as adults. And it's interesting that we both, you know, feel pretty warm and fuzzy about these relationships, even the ones that didn't have a whole lot of airtime of playtime. So Maybe that offers a little bit of encouragement that we don't have to like orchestrate the relationship. The relationship yeah. is there because the biology is there and the family history is there and how close yeah. they become, you know, is not really within our control. Well, um, and I didn't become close with my sister until I was in my later teen years. Right. Because she was 10 years older than me. And yeah. by the time I even remember her, she was moving out. Yep. So it's, you know, she was... 16 years old and busy when I like the early my earliest memories of her I was three four five six she was busy and then she was going to college and gone yeah so we really didn't circle back around until I was much much older and yeah but that family history really did make a difference I think creating opportunities for them to see each other will help that kind of stuff happen but you can still have a close relationship with someone when you have that background you can still have a close relationship even if you see them once every couple of years I I totally agree less about the time spent and more about the quality of it and, and the connection that you can't really replicate any other way. Well, let's talk about that a little. I think, um, in a few weeks you and I are going to do, or I'm hoping to talk about, um, long distance family relationships, but I think it, uh, it would be fun to talk about that just for a few minutes now. And then we can go deeper into that, um, in a future episode. But I do think that our family has some ways that we've tried to do this because, um, the first, my kid's first cousin on Brian's side, like I said, she just turned three and we only see them once a year. They live in New England. We live in Southern California. Um, 
But the first simple way is that we just talk about family and family members a lot. Like I really make an effort to make it part of regular conversation. We talk about like my kids know they understand like the like the family ties like, you know, daddy's yeah. sister is Lindsay and Lindsay is married to Jeff and they have Madison. And we, that's because we make it a regular when they send me, you know, if Lindsay texts me pictures of Madison, I show the kids and we talk about it and we watch the videos and we, you know, we don't actually FaceTime or Skype as much with them because of time zones and schedules and stuff. But between like showing pictures and, and just making making those family ties a part of regular conversation over time, as my kids have gotten older, it does make a difference. Like my, my kid, you know, and it's, it's, it is hard that they only see that side of the family once a year, yeah. but it's mm-hmm. not so hard that it's like you give up. Like we really right. don't, we really make it, um, the grandparents on that side are as like occupy the same sort of level of importance as the ones they see more often on the other side. So yeah. it's just, yeah. I think it takes effort. Um, we do fun little things. Like I, I send Violet's hand-me-downs, a lot of the nice ones I send to our niece on Brian's side um, for a big reason is that they get us really nice clothes. So they've gifted us really <laughs> beautiful clothes um, to Allegra that then were passed down to Violet over the years. And it's really fun for me. Some of the, you know, you know how kids like don't even wear stuff as often and then it's like in perfect condition. So I don't send them like sweats with holes in the knees, but I always pick a few things and it's, it's not cheap to ship. Like it would be way right. cheaper to just buy her some cute outfits from the gap and have them shipped. But they, they love getting that box and opening up and it's Violet's clothes that were worn by Allegra. And now Madison gets to wear them. And we talk about the clothes and we talk about like, she'll send pictures and I'll say, Oh, we wore that to this thing, you know? So I, I don't know. There's no like, it is not easy when they're far away, but yeah. then when we do get together, I feel like my kids very much know who their aunts and uncles and cousins are on that side. And hopefully as they get older, you know, there's, then they have more, more of those trips to build on. You know, we do the Rhode Island yeah. trip with that side every other summer and they, they have memories of that now. They know what we do, you know, when we go with that side of the family and Brian even has cousins who have kids now. So those are whatever my kids, second and third cousins. But, yeah. um, again, they're, they're part of the family and we just try to keep it from slipping away. I don't know. Yeah, no. And I, I'm looking forward to talking about that too, because I do think that there are probably some concrete things that, that I could be doing. Like my, you know, my brother Buck lives in Minneapolis. We usually see them once a year, sometimes a little more, but the times that we've seen them more, it's been the adults, not the kids that all get together. Right. Um, so the cousins see each other about once a year and that's hard. And they're, they're all very close in age. Um, and so there are some ways like they've been able to sometimes play on Xbox live or, uh, go on the same, they like have each other's Instagram accounts, but it's not the same thing. And I think that there, there's probably some very, um, solid and concrete ways that we could nurture that right relationships more but i also when you were talking about going to rhode island one thing i was thinking about was you know those trips will even start to change um when your kids are instead of the ages they are now when like say allegra's 14 yeah think about how much more freedom she'll yes. have to hang with her her cousin and how old yeah. is the cousin out there the she's cousin? three now so she okay. the age difference is six years between allegra to her and only a couple yeah. years with violet yeah so it'll be more like then it'll probably be more like a violet thing yeah and, uh, but violet yeah but yeah. like they'll be able to like go off together and do stuff and that's when yeah. it starts to get when they get that freedom a little bit and they can yep. have like share some space and time and not have the parents breathing down their necks because even if we're not literally breathing down their necks we're still on a schedule we're yep. still doing this or that and it's more about the adults telling the kids what to do and when it becomes more about the kids having some freedom I do think that it just becomes easier to have those connections yeah so yeah I mean that's something but I do want to get more into that like the distant the distance I think I think that would be a fun episode um we recently posted a call for topics and you guys on Instagram like we, I don't know how many comments we got but many 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 um and it's it's fun to see the patterns um and there were several requests for actually cousins were one of the requests but grandparents okay. in-laws um and then roped into all that long distance family um how to handle it when family doesn't necessarily get along like it's a whole this extended family thing there's like a 10 episodes probably in there that we can do i think this is a good place to wrap up for now um i would love to hear from our listeners um and how you handle this again i feel like sarah's the one with cousin envy here i have cousin envy (laughs) about my own growing up cousins and for my kids um so it's really fun to see how 
different families are handling cousin And remember that, you know, there's always flip sides to every coin and with great cousin abundance comes great cousin <laughs> responsibility. It does. And it just, it just changes things. It's just a different, it's just different. It's not better yeah. or worse. Yeah. Yes. I, that's actually, that's a great point. Um, and yeah, so I'm really looking forward to hearing your kids talk about their cousins yes, or whoever we decide well. to feature at the end yeah. of the show. So stay with us listeners, listen all the way to the end for that fun segment. And then uh, check out the show notes at themomhour.com and uh, check out our sponsors who we will link to in the show notes. And uh, yeah, we will be back with you guys next week. Sounds good. Hey everyone, so as promised, I am doing a little segment with two of my kids where we're going to talk about cousins in our lives. And the way I'm setting this up is I've got um, a short list of questions that I'm going to ask first Owen, who's hanging out with me right now, and then later Clara. Um, And some of them are going to be like kind of hot seat, you know, they're going to get the answers right or not. And some of them will be a little more essay style. So, hey, Owen, glad to have you on the show. Hey, uh, I'm Owen. (laughs) <laughs> that you are. Okay. So Owen, I'm just going to ask you these questions. Um, one after the other, there's six questions. Um, there are no right or wrong answers. Actually, that's true. There are, there are wrong answers. So you, you, you are going to be quizzed on this. Okay. So here we go. Owen, how many cousins do you have? Um, okay. Quinn, Jack, Ruby, Luna, Allie, Mari, Harry, uh, Mario, Cecily, I mean, nine that I know of. And then what about your other cousins? You've got cousins on dad's side, too. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Maddie, hey, Hugh and Henry, and that's it. So how many is that? Eleven. Correct answer is 14. So you've got... Uh, Aunt Kelly and Uncle Buck's family, that's four. Aunt Catherine's family, that's four. So we're up to eight already. Uncle John's family, that's three. So we're up to 11. And then Aunt Beth's family is another three. So that's 14. Well, um, well I guess I don't know that much about my... <laughs> well, you do. Okay, so here's a quick one. Who is your oldest cousin? Mario. Yes. Who's your youngest cousin? Hugh or Henry. You don't know which one was born first. They're twins. Uh, Henry is young. I'll have to check that with Aunt Beth and see if that's true. Okay, which of your cousins live the farthest away? Uh, Harry in Minnesota. That's true. All right, these ones are a little easier. What's your favorite thing about having cousins? Um, You can, like, joke around with them, and they can't ditch you. Like, They're, <laughs> they're like, forced to be your friends? Yeah, pretty much. That's awesome. And what is your least favorite thing about having cousins? Um, sometimes we get mixed up and that's not fun. You mean like people don't know who you are and they think that you belong to the wrong family? Well, like they keep thinking that I like am brothers with Jack and that can get weird. And at certain points you just have to tell them and just stop playing along with it. All right. Anything else to say about uh, your cousins or having cousins or cousins in general? Uh, just don't be mean unless they deserve it. Don't be mean unless they deserve it. Very wise and compassionate words from Owen. Well, thanks for uh, being on the Mama Hour, Owen. Yeah. Great. Okay. And now I'm here with Clara. Clara, thank you for coming on the Mama Hour. Okay, so what's the first question? Okay, so you know I'm going to be asking you questions about cousins, and you seem really nervous, like maybe you're going to get the answers wrong? Yeah, but... Well, stop looking. You can't look. So, okay. First question. How many cousins do you have? Uh, my answer is a lot. You can just make a guess. It's, the answer is a lot. The answer is just a lot? Yes, that's a lot. Um... I don't know. There's probably like more than seven. (laughs) There are more than seven. Would it surprise you to know that you have 14 cousins? Oh, well, that's new. It's not new. You've had 14 cousins for a while now. So you've got Uncle Buck's family, Uncle John's family, Aunt Catherine's family, and Aunt Beth's family. It's a lot of cousins. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, who is your oldest cousin? Um, uh, Mario. Mario is your oldest cousin. Good job. Who's your youngest cousin? Uh, Hugh and Henry. True. They're twins. This is a trick question. Do you know which one's older? Uh, I think Henry is. Is older? Yes. So then Hugh would be your youngest cousin. Which cousins live farthest away? Um, is it Mari and Allie? Yep, Mari and Allie and Harry and Elizabeth, they live in Minnesota. What's your favorite thing about having cousins? I don't know. Well, I, Ruby and Luna live really close, so I get to go to their house almost every day. So That's true, and that's fun, huh? What's your least favorite thing? Your least favorite thing about having cousins? Speak up so we can hear you. Um, well, a bad thing about having cousins that live right next to you is sometimes that you don't want to go, but then you have to. So so it's like two sides of the same coins. Like you get to go play with them, but sometimes you have to go play with them and you'd rather not. Yeah. Anything else to say about cousins? No. That's it, huh? Yeah. Your cousins have been a big part of your life. That's all you have to say? Yeah. Okay. Well, Clara, thanks for being on the show. You're welcome. You can say bye to all the listeners. Okay. Bye-bye.